guys. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Welcome back to the vlog. I hope you guys are having a great day. We have a lot to go over in this video, and we also have a lot to catch you guys up on since last video. If you guys are wondering what I'm using for a tripod, I'm actually using our VP Racing MS109 54 gallon drum that we picked up this morning. Uh, we're gonna be using this. This is the gas that we're gonna be running for the rally car this year. We were gonna run 85, but we decided to stick with the MS109 that the car was tuned on originally. So we're gonna start with unloading this drum and then we can go inside. We can catch you guys up on everything that's new with the rally car and the drift car that you missed from last video. And then we can finally get into the, the subject of today's video, which will be finally finishing up most of the cage work on the drift car, as well as getting a little bit farther in the stage rally prep for the rally car. Let's go. Alrighty guys, so we got the uh, the barrel of MS-109 unloaded from the pickup truck. As you can see, uh, I think they dropped it off the Grand Canyon before they brought it to our shop. We do have the dented model. They actually gave us a 1,000% discount on it. But this will be nice. Uh, then we have race gas for the rally car so that we can go testing with it a couple times before we actually go to the 100 acre wood rally on March 17th and 18th in Missouri, Missouri, imagine that. We're gonna head over here. Uh, we're gonna catch you guys up on a couple things that we have done since the last video. As you can see, we took the motor out of the drift car. Uh, the reason for doing that is we are going to paint or prep and paint the engine bay just like we're doing to the interior. A uh, couple different things. We actually uh, kind of snowballed on the project. We were going to just keep the stock motor and run stock fuel lines and everything. We are now going to go to uh, AN lines, a radium drop in hanger for the fuel tank to, an, to full AN lines feed and return. We're going to run all new brake lines from the back all the way back up to the front. Uh, we're going to run a dual caliper setup for the handbrake rather than the inline setup that this had before. Uh, what else? I don't really know if there's anything else on the rally car or on the drift car for now. Uh, in today's video, what I'm going to be showing you guys is I have a template made out already for a cage insert. What we're going to do is we're going to fill in this gap in the cage right here. If you guys have ever seen the, the pictures of race cars and stuff on the internet and you see those like gusset holes where basically what we're going to do is we're going to cut this out to shape like that and it's going to be welded to the cage here and then welded to the body there just to get a little bit more rigidity against the body so that there isn't flex if we do happen to roll over or anything hits it right here. Uh, so we're going to be showing you guys through that process. While I'm doing that though, I'm going to take the camera and Dave's going to talk about a couple of things for wiring and stuff that we got to redo on the rally car. Yeah, so we have like a race tracker box. Uh, it communicates information back to the, uh, is it the rally steward, yeah, rally officials yeah, yeah. and whatnot. Um, status about the car, where its location is, um, boost level, things like that. So we got, got a couple things to wire in for that. They don't give you the actual box that's used in the rally. They just give you the wiring kit and you get the box and you get to the rally unit. There's a bunch of stuff in here. We'll have to figure that out. Comes with instructions. We don't need those. Charger later. Charging whirler. You know, whatever the vice grip guy calls it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, produces lightning. It's got a smaller pulley on it. So just going to put out a little more zap. Why do we need this? Huh. Iron Man 4x4s. That's why. We're going to have like, what, six of these? Eight of these? Six of them, I think. And they're going to be replacing our old crusty... What was that, a halogen? No, that's not a halogen. Well, there's an HID in here, but that's just one bulb. It's like 35 watts. I don't even know how many this is. I just know that the stock alternator, no, that's not going to keep up. Right. So we're going to go for the uh, sun effect. Don't look directly at these. You're going to go blind. You need some sunglasses at night. So basically what Dave is going to be doing uh, today 
is there's a lot of wiring that is very, very messy. And we're going to, we're not going to try and thin it out because if I say that, this car is also just going to snowball just like that one. And the car works as it is. So what we want to do is we want to clean up a little bit of it, kind of clean up the extra wiring for all the lighting and, and, and stuff like that. Get rid of the pod lights because we don't really need them anymore because we're running those big lights and we're running so many of them. Uh, so we just want to clean some stuff up, tidy some stuff up. We have to run the new cables for the tracker unit. And uh, yeah, basically what we're trying to do is simplify it as much as we can so that it's easy for Dave to service. And what we really do not want is something along the lines of this wiring creating an issue for us because we did not build it, we did not do the wiring, so we have no idea what is going on here. So we're gonna dig into it a little bit and we're gonna try and figure it out so we have a better understanding of it. Uh, while Dave is doing this today, like I said before, I'm gonna be doing the cage stuff, doing a little bit of welding, some final fabrication so that we can finally get the interior prepped and painted. So let's get started. Alrighty guys, so we are gonna start working on the drift car as Dave is working on the wiring over on the rally car. Been able to do a lot of the cage work, we did need to pick up some sheet metal. So I got some 18 gauge sheet metal. As you can see, that's what I'm using as my table right now. We also had to pick up a plasma cover. Good old Harbor Freight came through with the uh, titanium plasma 45. There's a 45 amp plasma cutter. It'll basically do whatever we need and it's got a warranty. So if it breaks, like most Har Harbor Freight stuff does, we can go just go get a new one. Uh, let's open it up quick. Alrighty, so we got it unboxed. Uh, pretty basic machine. We have the torch setup. We have a power adapter, which we do not need to use because we have power on the wall. Uh, we have a direction manual, which we are not gonna touch, as well as the ground cable. Pretty basic setup. Uh, we do have air plumbed into our shop over in the corner. So that's why this metal moved from over there, which you saw in the video before, to over in this corner, so we can move a little bit closer with the plasma cutter. Basically, plasma cutters need power, ground, and then you need an air supply to force oxygen through the torch, which we will get set up, and then we will start talking about what's going on with the cage. We got the plasma cutter all set up, the torch, we got the ground cable. I did do a little, little, uh, little test cut here. Worked pretty freaking decent. We got the air plumbed in on the wall over there, power over there. So the first step is, uh, with anything fabrication wise, we normally like to cut out cardboard templates of everything. So with this plate on the dash, basically what I did was I cut out a piece of cardboard. I worked down from something like that and wither it down to a perfect shape like this. This one fits perfectly on this, like that. Fills up all the gaps. We are gonna leave a little extra down here because I don't know quite yet how I'm gonna fill in the gap in between this plate and this future one. Uh, we will end up TIG welding it to the cage and then probably wire feeding it to the chassis just because this chassis is so, so thin and uh, TIG welding is just a little bit harder, especially in, a, in an awkward area like this. And I am not quite the best TIG welder yet. So after we get this cut out, this template, we go over this way onto the tracing part. So we have our sheet of 18 gauge steel here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this part, put it on here. So we're gonna use a paint pen, not really. You should not use a paint pen, but this is all we got. Normally you should use something like a permanent black marker or something. But we are going to try to conserve as much waste as possible. So I got the magic in me. Wow! Hot, 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 hot! Let's see. 
So we got the rough cut here. Uh, as you can see, best plasma cutter in the world. I actually left that notch. It looks like my, um, never mind. Damn. <laughs> I'm fucking good at this shit, dude. Man, you cut crooked as shit. Hey, man. <laughs> I don't know if I asked your opinion. It fits decent. Uh, like Dave mentioned in that snarky comment before, uh, my cuts are pretty crooked. Next up is uh, I gotta sand this down and prep it so that it fits perfectly in the hole. Phew. It is the next day, officially. Yesterday was pretty rough, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The old titanium laser, laser dazer plasma cutter job that we bought from Harbor Freight, it broke on the second time that I cut with it and I was pissed. I'm gonna be honest with you, I was pissed. I did not have a good day, so we stopped filming then. Uh, we're gonna pick up where we left off. I did get the one plate cut out, which I think you guys saw. We do need to make a couple, I scribed it right there. I need to notch a little bit off of here and then flatten up this edge because there is uh, the residue from the plasma cutter. Um, but before we get working, I wanted to describe kind of as we have this stuff sitting here, what the steps are for gusseting something. So if you can see, I already took one of these drill bits and made three holes with it that are the correct size. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our Diablo drill bits, plop it out, put it on our drill attachment taker, punch a couple holes in the thing. You gotta make sure that the drill bit that you take is the right size for which die you're gonna use. It works pretty simple. Uh, if you have a half inch die like this, this is their half inch die, you use a half inch hole cutter, hole saw, which we do not have. Uh, half inch is small enough to use just a drill bit, so that's what we're gonna use for these. But once you step up to something like the one inch, I think that's what it is, right? Yep. Yeah, the next one's a one inch, so that will be, this will be the hole saw for this. This looks a lot bigger than it's actually gonna be, because you gotta remember, it's only as big as kind of the, this center part is. It's not as big as the outer kind of edge of the die. Uh, so, it's all pretty simple. I recommend using a 20 ton hydraulic press. We have a 12, 16 ton, 12, 12 ton, 12 ton. The best so, that Summit offers. Right, exactly. Uh, so we bought it from Summit Racing. It was pretty cheap. I think it was less than hundred bucks. And it hopefully will do the smaller dies. That's what we're hoping for. We're not gonna try any of the bigger dies today because none of the sheets that we're gonna be making are as big as you know one of these jobbers down here. But uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, we have a plasma cutter. I did, one of my friends came in clutch, Casey, shout out. He came in clutch, he let me borrow his plasma cutter because the titanium one broke yesterday. And uh, on a day's notice, he let me borrow his. So we are gonna be back in business. Okay, so we got the holes drilled in the plate and uh, we're gonna come over here. Dave's getting the hydraulic press set up. What are your thoughts? Plop her, uh, plop her in and squish her down. Yeah, we're good. There we go. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, that should be good. 
Whew, look that at that. That's easy, man. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's see how she looks. Moment of truth. Dude, Whew, look at that. A little gack right here. But yeah, we can clean that up though. Look at that, dude. Let me see the other side. Ooh, baby. Look at that, dude. That is sick. Did you know? That's actually pretty. Here is the final, the final product. We do have a little bit of marking like Dave said on this one and then on this one up here too, but that's easy. We can fix that with a file and just smoothen it out with some sandpapers. This is definitely gonna spice up the interior. Uh, we got it's this plate done. Strong. It's like harder to bend, especially like right there. And like your sideways, Yeah. there's no flex. Versus like up here. Yeah, yeah right it's here it's like. Super bendy. We might, we might want to add a small one up there. Good. That'd be sweet. Mm-hmm. So uh, basically, um, I'm going to probably mock that one up, tack it in the car, and then we will get to making the other plate and trying to make a, try to make an exact duplicate of, uh, of that one. So uh, let's get to it. So we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. Uh, a bunch of time has passed. I think you guys saw me welding in the gusset plates on the uh, A-pillars on both sides. We got both of them tacked in. Actually, we got both of them kind of stitch weld on uh, to the body of the car. What I was gonna do is I was gonna take weld to this so it'd look pretty and everybody like, you know, cause everybody's gonna see that part. Nobody's really gonna see this part up against the the car, it was a little bit tougher to get the TIG torch up and around in that air angle. You could do it, but I just decided to wire feed it. Um, I actually ran out of gas in my argon bottle for the TIG welder, so we're gonna have to wait for to do that tomorrow. But uh, I think we got a lot done today. Uh, the plasma cutter that I borrowed from Casey definitely helped get us back on track and kept us going. Uh, huge shout out to him, as well as this Diablo uh, hole saw kit really came in clutch. This hole saw drilled, I think eight holes, still has plenty of life left on it. And this thing, I mean, it ate through those holes in like legitimately like five seconds. It was crazy. The actual pilot bit that they send with it is perfect. It chews through anything. Uh, it, it worked out great. Definitely would recommend this kit, even comes with this nice case. Uh, the <clears throat> dies itself worked amazing. Uh, you definitely don't need a 20 ton press like they recommend you saying I think enabled to do the big one You probably would need a bigger press, but we were just fine with our 12 12 ton press uh, for for the stuff that we did Overall, I think they turned out well I ended up putting a fourth one in on the top just because it looked a little funky We had a huge space up here that I wanted to fill in uh, with that being said I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed if you do have any questions comments leave them down below uh, please hit the like button. It really helps us out. And I appreciate your guys' support. Make sure to subscribe, and we will see you next time. Peace.